The NHS is one of the first systems in the world to give high priority to enhancing patient safety by systematically learning from what goes wrong. A new approach to combating risk in healthcare has emerged and this recognises that patient safety should be a core priority within the quality assurance and quality improvement programmes of the health service. It also recognises that some degree of human error is inevitable even in the operation of the best service. This is particularly so in healthcare, which is delivered in a complex, high technology environment requiring many different human judgments, many interventions and very many clinical decisions. Human error in healthcare can never be completely eliminated, but the opportunities for it to occur can be reduced and when error does happen, its impact can be minimised. The administration of intrathecal chemotherapy has been the source of a great deal of investigation over recent months and a clear set of guidelines now exist to prevent failures in this specialist area. I know you'll be discussing these as part of your training. I hope you find this video useful and thank you for watching it. Dr. Livingston? Yeah, telephone. Oh, thanks, Sam. Excuse me, Duncan. Hello? Dr. Livingston? Yeah. It's Ramesh Shah, pharmacy here. Yes, it's about Mrs. Jane Hughes. I've seen this prescription for... Uh, Methotrexate you sent down? You've already got her down for her IV this morning, and I've only sent her Vin Christian up. I was wondering if... Um, There'd be a mistake. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to talk to you about that. Mrs Hughes is having both her procedures on the same day. She's got a big work commitment in a couple of days' time that she can't get out of. Yes, but you see, we, I have we don't... I discussed uh... it with Dr Munro and he's agreed that the treatment should go ahead. He signed the prescription. Yes, I see. But look, Fiona, this is very irregular. I assume that uh, you'll be taking the full responsibility. Yes. OK, then, look, I'll uh, prepare it for this afternoon. Thanks, Ramesh. Sorry about that. Sister Lynch, I'd like you to meet Dr. Campbell. He's just joined us and he's going to be working with me over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I have to say, Duncan, you're going to be giving us some much needed support. Glad to hear it. Hello, Sister. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to the unit. Thanks very much. Oh, by the way, Anne, Mrs. Hughes will already be on your list this morning for her IV, mm -hmm. but she's also having her intrathecal this afternoon. She's got a big meeting at work in a few days' time, so we're going to try and fit her in for both procedures today. I didn't know she'd gone back to work. She's only just started. She's taking it easy. It's only a couple of days to begin with. Right. So, Duncan, your papers and NTN number should be through in a day or so. But meanwhile, welcome aboard. Thanks very much. Ah, that's my blue pile then. I'll take it through here. Listen, I'll see you both later, OK? Sure. Bye-bye. Oh, Dr Livingston, before you go, I uh, just wanted to be clear about the amount of clinical work Dr Campbell will actually be doing. How much have we got? He'll take on virtually anything I would. If he's unsure about anything, then I'm always here to help. So he's familiar with the IT rules? Well, I would certainly expect so. He's very senior, Anne. He can do just about anything I can. But Fiona, he's not on the IT register yet, is he? No, but I'm seeing Dr Munro about that later and we'll sort it out then. Oh, Simon, I wanted a word. So he's fine with any of our procedures? Well, he's here on the personal recommendation of Dr Munro's sister. So as far as I'm concerned, if Dr Munro thinks he's competent, I'm prepared to go along with that. Now, he'll be acting as the specialist registrar and I'm hoping that you and your staff will give him every assistance. Of course we will. Right. But Jane Hughes is intrathecal. That will still be under your care, won't it? Yes, I'll be there. Hi, Abby. It's Jane Hughes here. Um, Abby, I'm going to be late. I'm stuck in the most awful place. Oh, sister. Jane Hughes just phoned. Apparently there's been a really nasty accident on the motorway and she's caught in the tailback. Great. Yeah, she says she's going to be quite late. At least two hours. Oh, what a day to be late. <sighs> Look, Abby, I'll be off shift by the time she gets here. I've got to leave a bit early for a dentist appointment. I'll put everything in the notes, but I'm going to miss the handover. So can you make sure that Sister Roberts knows what's happening? Of course. I'll get the notes ready for her. Darling, Are you okay? Good boy. Being a really good boy. We'll be there soon. I'll be there as soon as I possibly can. Do try to calm down. 
It should only take me half an hour at the most. I'll see you as soon as possible. Oh. Is everything okay? Not really, sister, no. Actually, that was my mother on the phone. My father's had a coronary. I've got to get over to the general. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, obviously, you must go. Thank you. Look, Dr. Campbell will cover for me. Could you show him around and take him through the notes when you get a chance? Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't had a chance to see the notes myself yet, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Oh, I'm sure we'll manage. Don't worry. Just go and be with your father. I hope he's OK. Thanks. I'll call in later. Yeah. Can you cover for me this afternoon? Sure. I'm sorry about the late notice. It's my father. He's had an MI and I want to be with him. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Of course, no problem. Thank you. I've asked Sister Roberts to go over a few things with you. I'm sure between you, you'll manage fine. Sure. Good luck. Thank you. Dr. Robinson. Simon, it's Fiona Livingston. I'm sorry about the short notice. My father's had a coronary. I've got to get over to the general. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. OK, yeah. Sure. Excuse me. I'm Dr. Campbell, covering for Dr. Livingston today. Oh, hello, Dr. Campbell. Hi there. Uh, listen, have, have you seen uh, Sister anywhere? Sister Roberts? Yeah, there she is, down there by the nurse's station. Sister Roberts, thanks very much. Okay. Sister Roberts, I'm Dr. Campbell, covering for Dr. Livingston today. Um, I understand she's arranged for an SHO to give us a hand this afternoon. Dr. Simon Robinson, is he here yet? No, not yet. Abby? Has Mrs. Hughes arrived yet, please? No, she's just called in. She's about ten minutes away. Mrs. Hughes, she's, she's one of mine. I better get down to pharmacy for the chemo. Thanks very much. See you later. OK. When Mrs. Hughes arrives, can we make sure that Bay 8's ready for her, please? Yes, of course, Helen. Thank you. Come in. Hi. I've just come over from St. Stephen's unit. I'm covering for Dr. Livingston. I've come to pick up the chemotherapy for Mrs. Jane Hughes, intrathecal methotrexate. She's under Dr. Munro. All right. I don't know we've met, have we? Dr. Campbell, I'm Charlotte Green. Oh, and nice. you'll be performing the procedure today, will yeah, you? Yeah, I will be, yeah. Right, I'll just check the register. Just procedure. Um, I don't seem to have you down. Well, it should have been sorted out with Dr. Munro by now. And I think that Dr. Livingston spoke to Mr. Shah earlier on. OK, then. Uh, sorry about this. Take a seat. Let's have a look on the database. Campbell, Duncan Campbell. I mean, it should be there. There's no sorry. question it should be there. I'm sorry, I, I'm just a bit pushed for time, that's all. Um, oh, yes, there you are. Sorry about this. Hello, pharmacy. Yes, yes, that's right. And what's the patient's name again? Ah, uh, sure, that's fine. Be ready by four this afternoon, OK? Great, bye. It seems he's only just put you on the list. Um, now, you're a patient. Would that be a Jane Hughes? Yeah, that's not. Right, I'll just check this is ready for you. Thanks. Definitely running late now, I'd say. Here we are, Doctor. Methotrexate, two milligrams in two mils. Right. This is pen. Right. Right. Oh, sorry, Doctor. Excuse me for a moment while I take this. Hello, pharmacy. Yes, he is, but I'm afraid he's on lunch at the moment. Can I take a message? And what extension is that? Fine. Bye. Now, where were we? Jane Hughes. Hospital number 3267980. Date above 261274. Batch number BX4372294. Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, now, if you could just sign here. And we've got capitals here. With pleasure.
Hi, sweetie. Hi, Jane. Oh, hi. Oh, you must have had a nightmare, Jane. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel awful. Oh, don't worry. Gosh, has me grown? <sighs> yeah, he's into everything. Where are we today, Abby? Well, I'm not quite sure what's happening today. They're having a few problems. Oh. But I'm pretty sure we're in Bay 8. Right. Yes, it's this one. Look, can I take your bag? Oh, thanks. Okay. Ah, sister, has Mrs. Hughes arrived yet? Yes, she is. Just settling in now. Great. Look, would you check this methotrexate safe with me, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks a lot. Jane Hughes. Number 3267980. Can I borrow your pen? Okay. I've left mine in pharmacy. There we go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Look, would you put this in the fridge for me while I go and deal with this? Thanks a lot. Hello, sister. Hi, Simon. Is Mrs. Hughes here yet? Yeah, she's just checking in now. Thanks for helping out. I've left our notes on the side and I'll be with you in a minute. No problem. So, how's George? He's a bit hot and bothered, actually. He had a terrible tantrum in the car on the way here. Oh, I don't really blame him. We were stuck bumper to bumper for hours. It was awful. Anyway, he's settling down with his dad now, so... Could you pass me my walkman, Abby? It's in my bag. Oh, I'll just do your blood pressure and then I'll get it for you. Hi, Abby. Oh, hi, Simon. I don't see you here very often. No, I've been on nights. Just come off. Oh. Oh, could you get Jane's walkman out of that bag for me, please? So, what can I do for you? Dr Livingston asked me to give you a hand this afternoon. Seems like she's got her hands full. Oh, great. Sorry, um, Mrs Hughes, isn't it? Yes. I'm Dr. Robinson. Hi. How are you feeling? Pretty awful, actually. I've been stuck in the car for hours. I'm so sorry to hold you all up. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Hi, it's Mrs. Hughes. I'm Dr. Campbell, covering for Dr. Livingston this afternoon. Hi, Dr. Campbell. I heard about her father. It's awful. Will he be all right? I'm sure he's in very capable hands. Ah, you must be Dr. Robinson. Thanks very much for helping us out at such short notice. No worries. Happy to help. Now, uh, Mrs. Hughes, you understand what treatment you'll be having this afternoon? Yes, I do. Right, let's have a look at Mrs. Hughes' blood results then, shall we? Mm. Yep, that all looks fine. And the consent form? Yes, I have. Observations all right? Yeah, fine. Right, would you check the wristband with me, please? Right, it's Mrs. Jane Hughes, hospital number 3267980, date of birth... 26, 12, 74. Good. Lovely, perfect like that. Can you get some help, please? Abby! Got to go, Dr. Cannon. If the need is, I presume they'll call. Let's just get on with this. I'll get that for you. Great. Look, listen, before you do that, would you just um, check the local with me and then I'll prep the skin? Sure. Look, I've asked Dr. Campbell twice today to call me. Will you pass my message, please? Yeah. Now, you will feel just a little bit of pressure here. There we are. <laughs> Wonderful. That's great. Anything important? I'm not sure, really. I've taken a message. There you go. So, uh, who was it? Someone from admin. They want you to give him a ring down. <laughs> That's the third time today. Right, I'm ready for the chemo now. Simon, I'm sorry, w would you mind going and picking it up from the, from the fridge? I think we've lost the staff nurse completely now. It certainly seems like it. I think there's a problem on the wall. I'll find out what's happening. Thanks very much. Is everything all right, Mrs Hughes? 
Won't be much longer now. Here we are. I'm afraid Abby's going to be a while yet. I've just seen her rushing around. Well, we can't afford to waste any more time. You'll just have to check it with me. Is that OK? OK. Fine. Jane Hughes. Yeah. Hospital number 326 7980. DFB 261274. Yeah. Expiry date 080903. Everything okay, Simon? Dr. Campbell? Yeah, everything's yeah. fine. Fine. I'm slightly got a bit of a problem on the ward. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Staff now shouldn't be too much longer. Actually, we're nearly finished here now. Mm -hmm. Tell me, has my next IT patient arrived yet? Yeah, he's in the waiting room. I have explained we're running late. Uh, can you check his blood results? They're not looking okay. good. Okay, thanks. All right. Ignore it. Just ignore it. You will thank Dr Livingston for me, won't you? It's such a help you fitting me in like this. Of course I will. It's not a problem. Thanks. Is that okay? Okay, it's fine. Thin Christine. Two milligrams in two mils. Right. Okay, that's it. Got a plaster? to hold you up. You can't have finished already. Yeah, we have, yeah. I've got the methotrexate. So what have you given her? Oh, my God. Can someone call Dr Monroe, please? Life is unpredictable, and always will be, but hospitals are getting better at preventing problems before they happen. Even so, every mistake you've seen in this drama has been made, somewhere and at some time, in the NHS. Thankfully, rarely. Worldwide, there have been 23 reported cases of accidental intrathecal injection of a vinca alkaloid since 1968, but every one of them led to either severe handicap or to death. For every drug prescribed, dispensed and administered, there are checks and procedures that are supposed to prevent any mistakes. Well, nowhere are they more crucial than with intrathecal chemotherapy. In this part of the programme, we'll show you the importance of following the national guidance. Now, each trust has its own specifically tailored local protocol. Procedures vary between hospitals. But the national guidance principles need to be universally adopted. They'll make sure your working practices are safe for your patient, for you and for your trust. So let's take another look. Our specialist registrar, Dr Livingston, gets a call from a worried pharmacist. And a terrible chain of mistakes begins. It's Ramesh Shah, pharmacy here. Yes, it's about Mrs Jane Hughes. I've seen this prescription for uh, methotrexate you sent down. You've already got her down for her IV this morning, and I've only sent her Vin Christine up. I was wondering if um, 
There'd be a mistake. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to talk to you about that. Mrs Hughes is having both her procedures on the same day. She's got a big work commitment in a couple of days' time that she can't get out of. Yes, but you see, we, I have we don't... I discussed uh... it with Dr Munro and he's agreed that the treatment should go ahead. He's signed the prescription. Yes, I see. Having reacted appropriately and responsibly to an irregularity he'd spotted, our pharmacist was promptly overruled. Dr Livingstone pulled rank with the consultant's name and signature. But at least the change was verified and the prescription was, after all, signed. Could and should Mr Shah have pushed further? Actually, he had every opportunity, indeed every right, to postpone the procedure. The national guidance states that intrathecal drugs should only be issued with written proof that any intravenous drugs have already been administered. So there has already been a break with protocol. And what about the consultant, Dr. Munro, when he signed the chemotherapy chart? Shouldn't he have discussed these changes himself with the multidisciplinary team, including the pharmacist, before treatment? As team leader, he's responsible for keeping everyone up to speed. So it's also a big failure on his part. Perfect. Sister Lynch, I'd like you to meet Dr. Campbell. He's just joined us and he's going to be working with me over the next couple of weeks. I have to say, Duncan, you're going to be giving us some much-needed support. Glad to hear it. Hello, sister. It's all a bit informal, isn't it? That's often a problem with training. But with all new staff prescribing, dispensing and administering chemotherapy, it's vital to make time for a formal induction programme. Across the different staff disciplines and cultures, everyone needs to learn proper procedure in the proper way. Oh, by the way, Anne. Mrs. Hughes will already be on your list this morning for her IV, mm -hmm. but she's also having her intrathecal this afternoon. She's got a big meeting at work in a few days' time, so we're going to try and fit her in for both procedures today. Dr. Munro and Dr. Livingston had discussed the change of schedule for Mrs. Hughes. What Dr. Livingston should have done was to liaise with the team well in advance of the appointment. You could see Sister's reaction straight away. She was unhappy not only that there was a new doctor who wasn't on the register, but also that Mrs Hughes's treatment had been rescheduled without proper consultation. Could she have done more? Insisted on speaking directly with Dr Munro and Mr Shah herself. Oh, Dr Livingston, before you go, I uh, just wanted to be clear about the amount of clinical work Dr Campbell will actually be doing. How much have we got? He'll take on virtually anything I would. If he's unsure about anything, then I'm always here to help. So he's familiar with the IT rules? Well, I would certainly expect so. He's very senior, Anne. He can do just about anything I can. But Fiona, he's not on the IT register yet, is he? No, but I'm seeing Dr Munro about that later and we'll sort it out then. Not one direct answer to a direct question. Here we have an experienced specialist registrar, competent, in control, but not communicating with one of her team's most important members, Sister Lynch. As well as this, Dr Munro made the serious error of not informing the rest of the team a new member would be joining them. And even if Dr Campbell did have intrathecal chemotherapy experience, he still should have gone through the local induction programme before registration. Oh, Simon, I wanted a word. So he's fine with any of our procedures? Well, he's here on the personal recommendation of Dr Munro's sister. So as far as I'm concerned, if Dr Munro thinks he's competent, I'm prepared to go along with that. Sister Lynch was doing her job, checking, organising and observing protocol. She's supposed to be on top of how the ward operates and to know exactly who's on the authorised register. She's supposed to be persistent and pedantic, if she needs to be. So what happened? What is it about some hospital hierarchies that prevents somebody as committed and efficient as Sister Lynch from doing their job? The registrar was trying to say, trust me, it's all been taken care of. But Sister just felt she was being put in her place. Oh, Sister, Jane Hughes just phoned. Apparently there's been a really nasty accident on the motorway and she's caught in the tailback. Great. Yeah, she says she's going to be quite late. At least two hours. Oh, what a day to be late. When Sister Lynch heard this, her immediate worry was that, because of her dentist appointment, she'd be off shift and miss the important handover to Sister Roberts, her relief. Sister Lynch's concerns now had to be committed to the ward notes and passed on by a staff camoli. But were they? A change of procedure, not properly discussed, agreed or documented, a new registrar on the ward for routine training, and a motorway tailback making a patient late. What else could go wrong? 
Oh, Sister Lynch, I've got Mrs. Hughes's drugs here. Could I have the keys, please? Thanks very much. Sister Lynch was unaware of a problem that would surface later with devastating effect. The nurse who borrowed the keys placed the intravenous vin Christine in the wrong fridge. I'll be there as soon as I possibly can. Do try to calm down. It should only take me half an hour at the most. I'll see you as soon as possible. Oh. Is everything OK? Not really, sister, no. Actually, that was my mother on the phone. My father's had a coronary. I've got to when Sister to Roberts attention. arrived on the ward and found out about Dr Livingstone's father, she was naturally concerned. Her overriding responsibility at the time, though, was the running of the busy day unit. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't had a chance to see the notes myself yet, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Oh, I'm sure we'll manage. Don't worry. Just going to be with your father. I hope he's OK. Thanks. I'll call in later. Did staff Camoli forget to tell Sister Roberts about the changes? Dr Livingstone thought Sister Roberts would have time to show Dr Campbell around, but there wasn't much chance of that. She also assumed Sister would give him the written intrathecal local protocol. It was also here that Sister Roberts had a chance to reassess the afternoon schedule with her team. This would have revealed the problems caused by Mrs Hughes's late arrival. It would also have given her a chance to think through new team member roles and to confirm any changes to the treatment plan and the chemotherapy chart. And where was Dr Munro, the consultant in all of this? Why didn't he give some support to Dr Campbell after Dr Livingstone had to leave the hospital so suddenly? After all, he's ultimately responsible for the registrar's training and the patient's well-being. Mrs. Hughes, she's, she's one of mine. I better get down to pharmacy for the chemo. Thanks very much. See you later. OK. Had Sister Roberts looked at the prescription chart or the notes, she would have seen that the intravenous therapy hadn't yet been given to Mrs. Hughes. Under the national guidance, the intravenous must come first. She should have questioned the timing of the two procedures, especially since the patient was now outside the appointment roster. In the heat of the moment, Dr. Campbell also failed to see that the intravenous hadn't yet been given, even though there are clearly marked sections for it on the chemotherapy chart. Pharmacy. Busy, brisk and efficient. Fussy sometimes, but isn't that the job? The junior who dealt with Dr. Campbell wasn't about to hand over drugs without finding him on the register first. But how did he get on the register? He did have previous experience administering chemotherapy, but Dr. Campbell hadn't been trained in his new trust's procedures. Dr. Munro, the consultant, should have known this. For whatever reason, the pharmacist hadn't passed on a vital change to his junior before he left for lunch. If there had been fewer distractions, she would have noticed the chart for intravenous vin Christine wasn't signed off. Right. Maybe the consultant had used abbreviations. Perhaps the writing on the chemotherapy chart wasn't legible. Even so, and despite being under pressure, she did check the name, numbers and date of birth twice. But she also made assumptions about Dr. Campbell's experience and his familiarity with procedure. And she allowed him to walk away without either of them spotting a crucial error. She should have stopped the authorization of the methotrexate. It was now inevitable the two drugs would be present together on the day unit. So, when Jane arrived, most of the fatal elements were already in place. Dr Livingstone was out of the picture entirely. Dr Campbell was taking her place. Dr Simon Robinson, a senior house officer with limited chemotherapy experience, had been chosen to help him at very short notice. And. Dr. Robinson hadn't been through the local induction programme and wasn't registered to check intrathecal drugs. Bye-bye, sweetie. Hi, Jane. Oh, hi. Oh, you must have had a nightmare, Jane. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel awful. No, oh, don't worry. Gosh, has me grown? <sighs> yeah, he's into everything. Where are we today, Abby? Well, I'm not quite sure what's happening today. They're having a few problems. Oh. But I'm pretty sure we're in Bay 8. Right. Yes, it's this one. Look, can I take you back? Oh, thanks. Okay. Bay 8 is the ward's designated intrathecal chemotherapy area. Staff nurse Camoli should have immediately checked with Sister Roberts or any of the team about Mrs. Hughes's intravenous. Mrs. Hughes arrived very late to find the ward shift changed. Sister Roberts was new to the patient. Her treatment plan 
and the local protocols. George was a bit hot and bothered, actually. Not one person questioned Mrs Hughes herself about her treatment. Nobody was aware of her missed intravenous. Everyone was focused on her intrathecal, and everything seemed just fine. Ah, sister, has Mrs Hughes arrived yet? Yes, she is, just settling in now. Great. Look, would you check this methotrexate with me, please? Mm -hmm. sure. Thanks a lot. Bleeps, the biggest distraction of all. Very important for work, of course, but Dr. Campbell's was really going to cause problems this time. Can I borrow your pen? Okay. I've left mine in pharmacy. There we go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Look, would you put this in the fridge for me while I go and deal with this? Thanks a lot. Sister Roberts obliged by putting the methotrexate in the designated ward fridge. But she could have answered that bleep for him without halting the procedure. She failed as well to notice there was another pack on a lower shelf, also labelled Jane Hughes, containing vincristine. Sister Roberts didn't know a mistake had been made that morning, with the vincristine being put in the wrong fridge. The national guidance is clear about separate designated areas for storing intravenous and intrathecal drugs. Hello, Sister. Hi, Simon. Is Mrs Hughes here yet? Yes. Yeah, here, Sister Roberts missed her chance to see if Dr Robinson had been put on the register. Because she was a relief nurse, she had no idea whether or not this had been done in her absence. So now it was her turn to assume, wrongly, he did have authorisation to be at the chemotherapy session. Dr Livingston asked me to give you a hand this afternoon. Seems like she's got her hands full. Oh, great. Sorry, um, Mrs Hughes, isn't it? Yes. I'm Dr Robinson. Hi. How are you feeling? Pretty awful, actually. I've been stuck in the car for hours. I'm so sorry to hold you all up. Oh, no problem. With staffing changes and the schedule slipping behind, everyone was feeling pressured. Nevertheless, here was a chance for both staff Kamoli and Dr Robinson to actually engage with the patient. Had they involved her a little more, the problem may have surfaced. But Dr Robinson didn't even get round to reading the prescription chart. Right, Mrs Hughes, I'm Dr Campbell, covering for Dr Livingston this afternoon. Hi, Dr Campbell. Dr Campbell and Dr Robinson met, and between them made major oh, assumptions. Ah, you must be Dr Robinson. Thanks very much for helping us out at such short notice. No worries, happy to help. They failed to question each other's experience, responsibilities and authorisation. At this point, Dr Campbell really should have consulted the patient and included her in the checking procedure. A word from him about her treatment would have brought up the missing intravenous. She would have asked him when she'd be having it. Right, let's have a look at Mrs Hughes' blood results then, shall we? Yep, that all looks fine. And the consent form? Yes, I have. Observations all right? Yeah, fine. Right, would you check the wristband with me, yeah. please? Jane herself had taken an interest in her treatment, but she'd begun to find its repetition stressful. The unit should have discouraged her using a CD player to blot out the discomfort. Good communication is vital throughout any procedure, and the patient's often the first to notice any changes. This time, she wouldn't. Remember also that children receive their chemotherapy under full anaesthetic, with a parent or guardian monitoring their treatment. If the leaders are presumed they'll call, let's just get on with this. When staff Camoli left, Jane Hughes became the only point of continuity in the room, really the only authority on her condition. It would have been more sensible for Dr Robinson to have attended the emergency. He was the one not on the register. And if Jane herself had been given a role in the checklist procedure, well, things might have been very different. I'll get that for you. Great. Look, listen, before you do that, would you just um, check the local with me and then I'll prep the skin? Sure. Thanks very much. Dr Campbell knew very well who was trying so desperately to get hold of him. A tenacious admin secretary trying to sort out his status. It was starting to annoy and worry him, so he let Dr Robinson take the call and got on with the procedure. Dr Campbell, now alone, was clearly breaking the rules. A nurse should always be present to check the drug, patient details and the route of administration. So when staff Camoli left, Dr Campbell should either have called for help 
from sister or postponing the procedure. Right, so uh, who was it? Someone from admin. They want you to give him a ring down. <laughs> That's the third time today. Right, I'm ready for the chemo now. Simon, I'm sorry, would you mind going and picking it up from the, from the fridge? I think we've lost the staff nurse completely now. Dr Campbell was obviously feeling the pressure as he asked Dr Robinson to fetch the methotrexate. Now, Dr Robinson wasn't on the register and so wasn't authorised under the guidance to collect these drugs from the fridge. He was also unaware of any reason why there might be two drugs in it with the same patient's name. It should have been easy to spot. Methotrexate is bright yellow. Dr. Robinson failed as well to take Jane Hughes's chemotherapy chart with him for cross-referencing. He picked up the first pack he found with her name on, from the correct fridge. Its label agreed with the information he had in his head, so he looked no further. Jane Hughes, yeah. hospital number 326. As both doctors made hurried checks with the chemotherapy chart and notes, they were interrupted by Sister Roberts, still dealing with the emergency that had called staff Camoli away. Sister Roberts could have checked with Dr. Campbell where they were with the procedure and then double checked with the intrathecal chart. She should have known Dr. Robinson wasn't cleared to collect or check intrathecal drugs. She should have intervened, checking the drugs herself and staying until staff Camoli returned. Dr. Campbell was already worried about his slipping schedule and whether or not he'd get a moment to call admin before his next procedure. Actually, we're nearly finished here now. Tell me, has my next IT patient arrived yet? Yeah, he's in the waiting room. I have explained we're running late. Uh, can you check his blood results? They're not looking okay. good. OK, thanks. Here, Sister completely ignored the patient at a critical moment in her treatment. She also should have insisted on taking over from Dr Robinson. It was her responsibility to check the intrathecal administration with Dr Campbell, not his. Is that OK? OK, that's fine. Vincristine, two milligrams in two mils. Dr. Robinson read out only part of the label to Dr. Campbell, a massive mistake, as it clearly stated that the drug wasn't for intrathecal use. Labels can be badly typed, which together with abbreviations and bad handwriting on chemotherapy charts may cause serious error. As Dr. Robinson makes his final check, his colleagues confident and happy to proceed. With both Jane Hughes and Staff Camoli out of the loop, the two of them are following their own procedure, with no one questioning what they're doing. Perhaps Dr. Robinson and Dr. Campbell mentally transposed the two drug names at that crucial moment of checking. Who knows? But both doctors were breaking the rules, failing to follow national guidance and failing to look after their patient. Sister Roberts had foolishly left them to check the drugs by themselves, Poor communication continued as they all made wrong assumptions about each other's experience, qualifications and responsibilities. As we know, they should have postponed the procedure. Sorry to hold you up. You can't have finished already. Yeah, we have, yeah. I've got the methotrexate. So what have you given her? We can only guess what went next through the minds of these people, and imagining what they must have felt like is disturbing. Can someone call Dr. Monroe, please? What happened here would have a profound effect on anyone. But a lot of what needs to change has to come from you, from the attitude you have to your work and from your understanding of how and why national guidance and local protocols relate to it. If the national guidance is rigorously followed by all trusts, there'll be consistent working practice across the country. 
and as staff move between trusts, retraining at local level before anyone is authorised to administer chemotherapy is vital. Throughout this video, we've seen a lack of communication between staff and the patient. There needs to be more of a team approach to healthcare, at the centre of which the informed patient has a right to be part of the checking process, as do the patient's relatives. Not following good practice, as recommended by the national guidance, can be devastating for everyone involved. Quite apart from your own conscience, litigation against your trust can be long, drawn out and harrowing. And when the media get hold of these stories, life is never the same again for anyone. Whatever your role, however efficient and watertight your local protocols, however strongly you feel, all of this couldn't happen to you. Just ask yourself one thing. Could you live with the consequences?